Welcome, I'm Tracy Smith, and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. Actors Laura Dern and Diane Ladd have released a mother-daughter memoir taken from conversations they recorded on daily walks. Rita Braver sat down with them to uncover what they learned about each other and themselves. I'm going to pretend that this street is water, and I got Jesus' ability to walk on it, okay? Listen, if that's what you need to cross the street. Why did you decide to make these very private conversations public? I think we, we share the longing for the people we love and anyone to have the experience we had, which was to know each other better, better more deeply. And ourselves. At the and same more time. authentically, and yeah. therefore ourselves, exactly. Later in the show, Laura Dern on co-starring with her mother. Let me ask you, Laura, because, you know, it's interesting to hear it from your mother's point of view. I mean, for you, suddenly she's not your mom. She's just another actor. How do you deal with that? I think, uh, you know, having done it in my early 20s and then having the privilege of working with mom when I had become a mother and was 40 when we started the show for HBO Enlightened with Mike White. And we, I will never forget one of the first scenes we did together on Enlightened. Then, row after row of colorful tulips are most often associated with European destinations like Holland. But there's a yearly festival for the brilliant blooms right here in the U.S. Connor Knighton takes us there. They think I went all the way to the Netherlands. I'm like, no, I just took a quick flight up to Washington. Washington's Skagit Valley, in the northwest corner of the state, is home to the annual Tulip Festival. All right, guys, look at us. Look cool. A celebration of a flower best known for being grown nearly 5,000 miles away. The area is much like Holland. Climate-wise, is extremely similar. They have the North Sea, we have the Puget Sound. That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. It took a health scare for actor Laura Dern and her mother, actor Diane Ladd, to discuss the things that often remain unsaid between a mother and daughter. But those tough conversations became the basis for a joint memoir. Here's Rita Braver. You'll have them forever. Wow. It is a moment that these famed actors have never forgotten. The one time during Laura Dern's childhood that her mother, Diane Ladd, slapped her. Because I guess I should have slapped her more. <gasps> oh, 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 my. oh, 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 <laughs> oh, oh, my God, you, please. I mean, no. you just lost it from me. Yeah, she was being a little bitchy. And oh, my I God, had had a day. Sunday morning. And I had a horrible day, and it just was like, I, I'm doing all this. She was being sassy. Yeah. Okay, she was being <laughs> sassy, really sassy. Do you think you remember this so much because it was the only time this ever happened? It feels like such a betrayal because it's so shocking. It is these memories of humor, pain, and unquestionable love that fill the pages of Honey Baby Mine, their joint memoir named for an old folk song Lad's father used to sing. You get a line and I'll get a pole. We'll go down to the crawdad hole, honey, baby mine. That's the song. Lad is renowned for roles like the waitress Flo in Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore one of three Oscar-nominated performances. You don't like me very much, do you? Uh, not very much, no. <laughs> Honey, that's okay. I've been dumped on by kings in my time. So you have to be perfect, and Charlie can be a... And Dern is an Oscar winner. You will always be held to a different, higher standard. And it's <laughs> But that is the way it is for playing a divorce lawyer representing the wife in Marriage Story. Is this where you guys walked in this general area? It is, every Absolutely. single morning. That's right. And the story of how their book came to be <laughs> is worthy of a Hollywood film. The daily walks in Santa Monica began when Ladd developed a lung disease, believed to be caused by exposure to pesticides. You were told that your mother only had 
six months to live. Yeah, they didn't know what they could do, except if we could get her to walk, it would help her expand her lungs. Grandma Mary did that so they time. walked and they talked, with Laura taping the conversations for herself and her children, the discussions newly recorded for an audiobook version. I'm going to pretend that this street is water, and I got Jesus' ability to walk on it, okay? Listen, if that's what you need to cross the street. Why did you decide to make these very private conversations public? I think we, we share the longing for the people we love and anyone to have the experience we had, which was to know each other better, better more deeply. And ourselves. At the and same more time. authentically, and yeah. therefore ourselves, exactly. They discussed everything, starting with Diane's marriage and divorce from Laura's father, actor Bruce Dern, to her efforts to discourage Laura from joining the family business. She was only like 11 years old. I said, don't be an actress, be a doctor, be a lawyer. I said, get a no. real job. <laughs> no, nobody cares if, if you put on weight or your chin points when you cry. If you're a doctor, they just want you to be the best you can be. But the actors, they care, 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 care. So, Laura, you, you heard this, but you were not to be discouraged. There was no stopping you. No. It is all I knew. And, and rumor has it you were conceived during the making of a movie. Conceived during the making of a, <laughs> of a Roger Corman biker picture called The Wild Angels. So, yes, you know, for me, a set felt like a second home. Mama. A home they often shared. You know who that was. Working together on a number of movies and TV shows. And I mean, are not going to see him ever. End of story. What was it like for you to suddenly realize, okay, I'm in this with my mother? I remember on the set of David Lynch's film Wild at Heart, and Nicolas Cage came up behind me and whispers in my ear, that's your mom, <laughs> like your real mom. <laughs> in the 1991 film Rambling Rose, Dern plays a promiscuous young girl living with Lad's family. Oh, hello, Rose, dear. Ma, you're looking pretty. Both mother and daughter were nominated for Academy Awards, but Lad has a better memory. This was the picture that the late Princess Diana chose as her absolute favorite, and she flew Laura and I to London for a royal premiere wow. and a party <laughs> in our honor, and she sat between us holding bo both our hands and crying, watching us perform. But Lad still agonizes over the time's work took her away from her daughter and the other challenges she, along with so many single moms, faced. How to pay the rent, how yeah. to get my daughter what she needs, and worse, because you got to go out for an interview and you got to hold your head up. You better not have a rip in that stocking. You better have those shoes not run down. You've got to put on an image. And though Dern felt lucky she was cared for by her grandmother, Lad's mom, she still grieved when her mother was on location. And still. I knew she loved me. But the loneliness was real. One of the hardest things for me as a working mother in the same profession when I became a parent was that I held guilt that I still don't know what's my children's loneliness or my own. And Dern's love for her own children, Jaya and Ellery, with her former husband, musician Ben Harper, has made her understand even more the grief that Lad felt over losing a daughter before Dern was born. This was a baby who died in a swimming pool accident where a nanny hadn't paid enough attention. She fell into the pool. She hit her head and knocked herself out. And uh, it all happened instantly. Um, and she died, and you will never get over that. I don't care what you say to yourself. I don't care who says what. The child is not supposed to die before the parent. 
You've and never talked about never this before. And I had not asked because I thought I was going to hurt you. And that was a lesson that I would want to share with everyone. Yes. That if we talk it out, there is healing of all kinds. Absolutely. In, but I did in fact, Diane Ladd has proved her doctors wrong. She continues to heal. Just completed the film, in fact. And mother and daughter have a lot more to say. You make me happy. And sing to each other. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Do, 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 do. That's it, folks. <laughs> Up next, an exclusive excerpt from our chat with Laura Dern and Diane Ladd. You can only see right here on CBS News Streaming. Stay with us. As promised, here's more from Rita Braver's chat with Laura Dern and Diane Ladd. Tell me something great about having Diane Ladd as your mother. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to pin it on one idea or one thing. I'll pay you $5 um, for that. <laughs> <laughs> but of the many gifts of having Diane as my mom, watching her at every age, in every experience, never give up on a dream, which we talk about in the book, uh, has been one of the great inspirations of my life. Always finding the glass half full, always building on to dreams, and knowing that self-love is the ultimate <laughs> goal, and guiding me to remembering that in myself, I think has been you know, of the of the many miracles of Diane. Love you. I think that's been, you know, one of the great gifts. So Diane, it's your turn. What what is a great thing about being the mother of the remarkable Laura Dern? Well, I think Laura's an old soul and I'm privileged she chose me to be her mother. And I think our job in life is to let our children stand on our shoulders in the hopes that they can see further than we have. And if that happens, then maybe humanity might really become humane. And I'm lucky because she's very bright, brilliant, she's very sensitive, and she's very caring, and I couldn't have a better daughter. One of the things I thought, and I'm gonna come to Laura in a second, but Diane, as, as young as you were when you got the acting bug, so to speak, and as much as you loved it, you didn't want Laura to start too young. Oh, no, 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 no. My family was out of their minds. <laughs> they were so naive. I waited through probably a lot of evilness all around me without ever knowing it. And I truly believe the angels were helping me and guiding me. But you didn't want your daughter to go into this thing that you loved so much as a right. young person. I love the work. I don't necessarily love the business. I love the work. I love the work the way you love your work. Oh, the doctor loves their work, the way somebody should love the work when they're cooking or planting flowers. You know, we should do work with love. Yes. Why didn't you want Laura to start? Because it's a very rough business, especially on women. The men would make, when I came along, I talked to Tina Faye the other day on the phone, and she said to me, Diane, I want to thank you. If you and the other women hadn't fought for the women, I wouldn't have the career I have today. And I started crying, and I said, you're right, because the men made 10, 12 times what any woman made. They always paid the man more. And a man 90 could do a love scene with a 17-year-old girl, but not vice versa. You gotta be Ruth Gordon, pretend you're crazy if you're gonna do a love scene with someone younger. Let me ask you, Laura, cause you know, it's interesting to hear it from your mother's point of view. I mean, for you, suddenly she's not your mom, she's just another actor. How do you deal with that? I think, uh, you know, having done it in my early 20s, and then having the privilege of working with mom when I had become a mother and was 40 when we started the show for HBO Enlightened with Mike White. And we, I will never forget one of the first scenes we did together on Enlightened. Uh -huh. We walked onto set and we were doing a scene in Enlightened where I read a letter to my mother of all the things I've always wanted to say to her. Uh -huh. And I'm waiting for this moment, this character, Amy, of like, this is gonna heal all the old wounds. 
and my mother's going to finally see me and hold me and love me. And she listens, and my mom has zero, <laughs> zero empathy on any level. And she looks at me and literally gets up and starts paying attention to her dog, who she lets out and mothers like the baby you've always wanted to be treated like. And I'm filled with such rage and jealousy for the King Charles Spaniel that is in the scene with me. But it is my mother, and yet we're these other characters, and she's playing out the completely shut down unloving oh, mom, no. which is the <laughs> antithesis of my mother. You talked about the fact that, you know, even though your parents are split, you were so lucky to continue to have a great relationship with your dad. Oh, yeah. And yeah, was what do you really think lucky. you get from him that you didn't get from your mom? I think, I mean, they're both hilarious, but he is, his wit is so fast, right? And his irreverence is delicious. Um, so I hope I, uh, I achieve the same level of irreverence at heart. And he moments. has a photographic memory almost. But didn't you know, if, again, if my research is right, the three of you actually got your stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame all at the same time? That's right. Now together. that must be a record, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is a record, I it think. It is, and I it was think. such a beautiful yeah. memory. I gotta that find the video of that for sure. I think you have to find all the good memories and hold on to them in life, they're precious moments. And that's why we want so much for people to enjoy the movie and that we, the, the book, not the movie, but the book that we shared for that reason. We put ourselves out there because when you have pain or a loss and you don't bury it but share it for the good of someone else, you heal yourself as well as other people. Up next, a festival in full bloom. Welcome back. Tulips are a welcome sign of spring, and for decades, one family farm has been behind most of the bulbs and blooms sold in the U.S. Connor Knighton got a tour ahead of Mother's Day, their busiest time of the year. Each year, these fields of flowers spring to life in row after row of vibrant, carefully coordinated colors. This annual bloom attracts hundreds of thousands of tourists who come to tiptoe through the tulips, posing for photos that some friends assume required a passport. They think I went all the way to the Netherlands. I'm like, no, I just took a quick flight up to Washington. Washington's Skagit Valley in the northwest corner of the state is home to the annual Tulip Festival. All right, guys, look at us. Look off. A celebration of a flower best known for being grown nearly 5,000 miles away. The area is much like Holland. Climate-wise, is extremely similar. They have the North Sea, we have the Puget Sound, so we never get too hot, too cold, which produces really big, vibrant, beautiful tulips. Brent Rusin comes from a long line of tulip growers. His family runs Rusengard, the largest display of tulips in the area. Here we have tens of millions of bulbs. Tens of millions? And you redo that every year? Yep. Dig them up, replant them every year. A real Dutchman here, Bill Rusin. Prince grandfather Bill and grandmother Helen immigrated from the Netherlands to the Pacific Northwest in 1947. Farther west and more farther west and all the big lights disappeared and I thought, oh my gosh, don't tell me if I'm going to live on a farm. I could have stayed in Holland and live on the farm. But the Rusins planted roots in Washington. Ten children and 36 grandchildren later, the small flower farm they purchased has blossomed into quite a family business, with relatives working everywhere from the gift shop to the corner office. That's not a field tulip, that's a greenhouse tulip. Today, their Washington bulb company is the largest grower of tulips in the country. And as popular as the display garden is, most of the action happens out of sight. This x-rays them, and it tells the machine where the flower is, so it puts it at the right level so they're even. Richard Rusin works on the greenhouse side of the business, where boxes of bulbs and bunches of flowers are shipped out all across the country. This logo here I feel like I recognize. Is this Safeway? Yes. I knew, I've seen that in the grocery store. From big supermarkets to small local florists, the tulip trade kicks into high gear in spring. Mother's Day is by large our biggest shipping holiday for tulips. 
It's not even close. Leading up to Mother's Day, the Rusins ship out more than 3 million cut flowers a week, including plenty to customers who are cutting it close. It's a huge spike at the very last minute. That makes me feel better. Everyone else is doing that too? Trust me. <laughs> I wish you didn't, but everyone does it, so it is, you are not alone. The tulip symbolizes new life. You'll see plenty of mothers-to-be in the fields. But to ensure the best bulbs for next year, growers generally have to top their outdoor tulips before Mother's Day. You want to leave as much green on the plant as possible, and you just bend oh, and snap it. Heart. So all the energy is now going to the bulb for growth. It allows the bulb to grow bigger in size. Bigger bulbs mean a bigger bloom next spring. With tulips, it's all about planning ahead. And for those of you who might not be the best at planning ahead, well, there's always tomorrow. Is there an after Mother's Day spike for the people who forgot? We noticed maybe the order total is maybe a little bit higher for those after Mother's Day ones where it's like, hey, <laughs> I better really gotta overdo yeah, it. I better throw in an extra bunch or two here because I'm making up <laughs> for it now. I'm Tracy Smith. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you here next time on Here Comes the Sun.